we'll take two and a half because I fucked up the first time. Action! <laughs> Hey, it's Sue and Megan, the Spine Breakers. And today we are doing a September wrap up slash Tome Infinity, Infinity and, and Beyond. Beyond round three wrap up. Yes. Um, I only read one book that was not part of the readathon. <laughs> That's the word. And I only <laughs> read one book. <laughs> Was better than last month. Ah, it was better than last month. And September was a kind of a shitty month, so I'll take the one book. What? Hey. Um, and to fit with the like around the world theme yeah. of uh, Tome Infinity and Beyond this round, we went with a beer from Brazil. Brazil. Imported, an imported beer. We usually drink stuff from the U.S. We do. We got something international this time. Yeah. And it's called. Zingu? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I know that there is at least one person who watches us from Brazil because she's commented on our videos before. So if you're watching, please correct us. Please if tell, we us, fuck that. tell us if that's correct. And also, is this like a popular beer in Brazil? Yeah. It's a black beer, it says. That's, I think, the only description. I think so. It says brewed and bottled in Brazil by CKBR. So let's uh let's try it. Give her a go. It's very dark. It is very dark. It's getting to be the season of the dark beer. It is. It's still 90 degrees outside. It's though. fucking hot. It's ridiculous. I think it's supposed to cool off after today though. Yeah, I think there's a, a front. Hopefully it'll stay. I'm trying to front. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try this. It says it's smooth as silk. We'll be the judge of that. <laughs> That was pretty smooth. That's damn smooth. Flavor's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't taste much. It's not bad. Mm -mm. Well, the second taste was better. That is better. The first taste was weird. Yeah. That's, I like it. It's not it's bad. It's pretty good. It's not too shab shab. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to describe it though. I'm trying to, yeah, I was trying to figure out like I mean, it tastes like black lagers I've had before, I think. It does. It, but it's, it's not a style that I drink that often, so. It's not as, like, thick as most of the black lagers I've had, I feel like. Like, it's almost a little bit, like, it's not really watered down, but I feel like it's coffeeed down. Like, if you took a black lager and maybe poured some coffee in it. Maybe? I don't know. It doesn't know. taste that much like coffee to me, though. I'm getting a, a weirdness. I think it's good. I like it. It's it has a bit of a sweetness to it, I think. It does. Yeah. Oh, you know what the weirdness is? What? It's Coca-Cola. Hmm, I can kind of see that. That's what it is, it's not coffee. Yeah. It's Coca-Cola. Hmm. Is there, what is the nut that Coca-Cola is made out Cacao? No, that's... Um, coca? Coca. That's the co coca? Yeah, coca leaves. Is it like, a nut, or is it... I think it's a, a leaf. Okay. That's what they make cocaine with, yeah. though. Yeah, but... But that's what they also make. Don't they still make Coca-Cola out of it? Just not the drug part? I thought so. <laughs> I thought so. I don't know. Um, Coca-Cola is okay, <laughs> but like, I would advise to, you know, don't do cocaine. Yeah, just probably not. Yeah. I mean, you probably shouldn't drink Coca-Cola either. It's yeah, it's it can like pretty eat the rust off of things, <laughs> yeah. but like, you know, it might you know eat away your esophagus and the enamel on your teeth. Anyway, so. Any I'll quickly talk about the first book I read this month, which was not part of Tome Infinity and Beyond, um, but it was this little tiny <laughs> book of poetry called The Physics of Love by Carla Kirchner, and this is um, by a local author. I got it at a, a bookstore here in town, um, and the cover is definitely what drew me in. It's this cool like kind That's of steampunk cool. uh, anatomical heart. And the poems kind of combine like math and science with, you know, poetry, but it's very like basic. It doesn't go into any like 
technical <laughs> shit. It's just like basic theories that pretty much anyone would have at least heard of, I think, if you've, you know, graduated high school. I did like that aspect of it, and I, I thought, you know, the poems were well written, but I just didn't really connect with a lot of them, because a lot of them are about, like, motherhood, mm -hmm. which I am not a mother. <laughs> and just a lot about god which i was not not expecting because yeah. like science and god to me is kind of like an oxymoron oh, um <laughs> but yeah i gave it three stars because i think it was well written but i just nothing really stood out to me in it that's fair that's kind of a cool concept it's a shame it wasn't yeah cooler you may as well continue on. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'll next... break up the, the middle part with my one read. <laughs> <laughs> next, um, for Tome Infinity and Beyond, first of all, wanted to say thanks to everyone who yes. participated. Um, if you didn't see the results, Team Warfare hey, good came job, in guys. first place. They pretty much killed it the whole, <laughs> the whole time. They slaughtered um, everyone. But we came in second. Woo! No oh. thanks to this girl. <laughs> so thanks to everyone else. <laughs> um, and I think our team MVP was our co-host, Kat. Damn, Kat. Yeah, she really killed it. She was getting it. Um, and thanks to all the hosts, and especially to Megan of Tome Infinity for putting, you know, the whole thing together. She puts a lot of work into that, and mm -hmm. she's really creative with her readathons. So, yeah. thanks, Megan. Yeah. Um, so, I did manage to read from all seven continents. Boom! <laughs> I had to rearrange, like re um think my tbr a little bit in order to do it because <laughs> i knew i wasn't gonna physically read all the books that i had picked but the first book that i finished was our teen group book which was the fifth season by nk jemison yeah. and um this is set on this world where um there's like a big rift in the world and there are these people who they can make or prevent natural disasters, I suppose. Which I guess wouldn't be so natural if they're the ones that did it. But, you know. Um, and they're kind of like pariahs in this society. It follows three different storylines of people who have this ability. I'll just say that. <laughs> I don't want to say much more. But um, I ended up really loving this. Um, and I gave it five stars, which I wasn't expecting. That's pretty awesome. awesome. You to bug in there. Well, I was trying to fish it out and like it- Oh, it's right there. Oh, fuck me running. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Alright, got it. <laughs> Straight from this side. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're cool. Sorry, I got really like- I was like, I have to get that out right now. Continue. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it was super interesting to me. I really enjoyed the characters. I, went somewhere I wasn't expecting <laughs> and I definitely want to continue with the series so That's and awesome. I read I flew through this one I was thinking I was the most worried about this one because it's the longest one on my TBR that was on my TBR but I probably read it like the quickest Damn. other than maybe my like graphic novel ones but I think that next I finished an audiobook it was The Brief History of the Dead by Kevin Brockmeyer narrated by Richard Poe, who sounded like a film noir detective Ooh. or something. That's fun. Which I was kind of into. It yeah. actually made me think of, immediately when I started listening to the audiobook, I thought of the opening to Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, uh, which is also the opening of the song Chainsaw Dismemberment by Mortician. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a man saying on the evening of August 14th, 1970 something to know, <laughs> and like giving an You're account of what happened in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but anyway, <laughs> that yeah. was kind of fun that he sounded like that. That is fun. Um, but this book I read for Antarctica, and um, it's partially set in Antarctica following this woman named Laura, who works for Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> there we go. She works yeah. for the Coca-Cola Corporation, and I think it's set in the future. Um, cause Coca-Cola is like very powerful. They're already powerful, but they're like even more hmm. powerful, I think at this point. And like corporations have kind of taken over things. Interesting. Um, but she works for Coca-Cola and she's on an expedition in Antarctica for them, which is kind of just like a PR stunt. It's not really huh. that important why she's there. While she's there, this plague, um, basically kills everyone. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> um, and then it's also partially set in this place called The City, 
um, which is where people go when they die if there's someone still alive on Earth who remembers them. Like in Coco. So, <laughs> oh, is, I haven't seen Coco. It's so cute. Um, so <clears throat> if there's if you live on in someone's memory, basically, then you yeah, live in a like city, Coco. and once and once someone. And once everyone who remembers you dies, then you disappear from the city yep. and go who knows where. Um, Just like Coco. Is it really? I'm so excited. Yeah. I wonder if he stole this from like, because isn't Coco like part of like Mexican culture? Well, the whole, the, I don't know if that, I mean, Dia de los Muertos is like the, the, I don't know what that culture believes, like if they actually believe that about like the dead, as long as you remember them, but it was tied into the whole like ofrenda dia de los muertos culture so i don't know if that mm. is a thing or not so he may or may not have stolen this from mexican <laughs> idea from I mexican don't culture i don't know yeah. um <laughs> but um yeah it had a really interesting concept but for me i did not care for the execution mm. um it, well i really was enjoying it throughout most of the book but the ending the ending oh. <laughs> like i literally thought there was another chapter and when it said thank you for listening to this or whatever I literally out loud yelled what <laughs> so did it just like not conclude anything or was it just like a garbage ending to, I mean it didn't really conclude it didn't explain anything I guess so you're like and I think that it was all about like oh, human connection and oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just I don't know I was looking for some sort of explanation for like the where fuck. people went when they disappeared from the city, something. Well, in Coco, when they disappear from the city, they are, are dead forever. They're just oh. gone forever. Oh. So like when there's no one alive who remembers you, you fade. You just and disappear you, from existence. From existence. You're, you're done existing. Well, that's fucked up. <laughs> so I wasn't that into it as a whole. I think I gave it two and a half stars. See, I was really like, as you were talking about it, I was like, oh, my God, that's, and that's my TBR right now. But I then mean, I like, did eh. see though that two other people, I think, on our team read it, and they rated it four stars. Oh, really? So they really enjoyed it. So maybe it was just me. I don't know. I mean, I think I was looking for more of a like scientific thing, mm -hmm. and it was like a fantasy. About like, look how many people you impact. Thing. And I'm right. Like, yeah, I don't fucking care. <laughs> <laughs> and then for Europe, I read Planet Fall by Emma Newman, um, which is about a woman who goes on this expedition to find God with all these other people. Mm -hmm. And so they go to this planet that's like calling to their their leader, and then some shit goes down. <laughs> yeah, no shit occurreth. Yeah, shit occurreth. I. This was almost the opposite of the last one, where like throughout most of the book, I was kind of like meh, but then the mm -hmm. ending was so intriguing, yeah, that it made me want to continue with the series. Um, but I think I gave it three stars. So yeah. it was. I had a bit of mixed feelings about it, but I think that's kind of we'll see I where the series goes. I have the second book, but I haven't I read it. I do too, yet. actually. Okay, so. I'll bust up in here and tell you <laughs> the one book that I finished this month, which is The Last Colony by John Scalzi. I never know how to pronounce his name correctly. I probably could look it up, but I'm lazy. <laughs> um, so this is the third book in the um, Old Man's War series. And this book is, it returns to the protagonist of the first book, which is John Perry. So he's living on this colony on this planet. <laughs> And he's offered the opportunity to go and colonize a different planet. They're like going to be like the first colony on this planet. Well, things are not quite what they seem um, with this. Dun, dun, dun. Bum, bum, bum. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. They have to figure out like who is telling the truth, what's what's truth, what's a lie, who can they trust, who can they not trust. But yeah, I like this book. I think I gave it four stars, but like. I gave the other two books four stars also, and so then after I thought about it, I was like, well, maybe I should have given this three stars, because I didn't like it as much as the first two books. Maybe it'd be like three and a half. Yeah, I think probably so. I, I really liked the second book a lot. <clears throat> I actually really liked the first one, too. 
I don't know. This one was just okay. Like, it wasn't as great. But I'm going to continue on with the series because, like, shit, I'm three books in now. I think there's six books in the series, so I'm halfway in. I got some shit. She's watching Sasha walk right through the middle of our tripod. Yeah. She, and not bump it. Well, she's going to lay down, and now she's, <laughs> like, at some Very point. Very close to bumping it. Sasha likes to just push the envelope. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so that's the only book I finished. But I liked it. I switched up my TBR here again, and I just went to the library looking for something that was like a graphic novel or something that would be like faster to read. Something quick. I was like, yeah. I'm not gonna read. Yeah, like, I'm gonna do all this. Another full novel. Um, but I found a manga called Magical Girl Apocalypse, and I just, I mean, I had to get well, it. Well, yeah, that's fun as shit. Um, and this is by Kentaro Sato. And this is the first manga that I've ever read, so I was really confused at first. I mean, I knew that they were like, they looked backwards, but I didn't know that you actually read it completely backwards. Like, you oh. read it from right to left. And it has little instructions. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> in cool. In the front. And it was, it was nice, too, because, like, there's things referenced in the book that are, like, specific to, like, Japanese culture, and oh. it would have little, like, asterisks explaining things, so that was nice. That's cool. Um, but this is about this boy who's in high school, and he goes to school one day, and he's like, school's so boring, I hate it. Yeah, yeah, do. <laughs> high school boy. And then, um, this little... Where, where are we both getting... We're both blowing up. <laughs> this little like lolita girl shows up and just like starts murdering everyone oh fuck okay <laughs> and um i thought it was okay <laughs> <laughs> it was very like the dialogue was pretty repetitive like it would be a lot of like the beginning i was like oh good lord something happened because it was literally just him complaining okay. for like at least 10 pages before like, anything happened <laughs> And then um, after things start going down, it was a lot of like, what's happening? What? How could this be happening? What? And I was like, why do you keep saying that? <laughs> Obviously it's happening, okay? Yeah. Um, and then it was, it was fun though. I mean, it was a lot of like action and gore type of stuff. Um, also, I mean, I feel like this is probably typical, but like, you know, like look at this shot. Oh, Jesus. And she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> they drew her an up the skirt panty shot of a of, of a, a corpse. corpse, yeah, a teenage girl corpse. Ah, um, which I I don't know. I like I said, this is my first manga, but from what I've seen of like anime and manga, I feel like that's fairly kind typical. Of typical. Yeah, and like the female characters are all like like what what school would let a girl wear a skirt that was barely no. covering her ass? And also, there's a character. The other female character in the book, um, let me find a good picture of her, other than the, you know, we'll lead a girl that murders everyone. Yeah. She has huge tits. <laughs> just <laughs> out all the time. And these are teenagers. They're like 16. So it's like, come on. Come on now. Um, yeah, but it was okay. I mean, it was like a good time, I guess, but I probably won't continue with the series because it wasn't that interesting. <laughs> That's fair. It's like gratuitous killing. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then I also picked up this graphic novel that I just thought looked interesting. And I it was does. Like, I can read that real quick. <laughs> it's called Cryptocracy by Van Jensen and Pete Woods. And this one just counted, I mean, I didn't mention it, but obviously this was for Asia, Japan. Um, this one was just another one from the United States. So in this book, or in this graphic novel, whatever, <laughs> uh, there's these nine families who basically control everything. Um, and no, but like the, the common population doesn't know this. So it follows specifically like this one dude who's part of the, they're all named after the planets for the most part, I think. And he's part of Mars, which is in the U.S. under the Denver International Airport, oh. which is where which I'm going to in January. Hey, so I'll maybe visit. Yeah, I'll see if I can find him. Pop on down. Um, there. <laughs> and then this dude shows up who starts like killing the elders in these families, and they're Shit. trying to stop this guy and stop all these like prophecies from coming true. And this was I enjoyed this. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I think I gave it four stars. 
So, yeah, and the art is pretty good. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. There's a page, but pretty sweet. It was, it was pretty good. It wasn't like amazing, but I dug it. Yeah. And then, ooh, I listened to another audiobook. Damn girl. <laughs> for this was for Africa, and it was the country Nigeria, and the book was called Kabu Kabu by Nnedi Okorafor and it's a collection of short stories and I think a lot of them like had to do with probably Nigerian myths and things like that. A lot of them had the same theme of like women who could fly. I think they were called wind seekers. <laughs> she wants to talk too. <laughs> she just emerges from under the couch. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of the stories seem kind of similar, but um, I, for the most part, I enjoyed it. So I think I gave it three and a half stars. Okay. It was pretty good. And then lastly, my last book was for, and I wasn't sure I was going to finish this. I, I was down to the wire on this one, and I almost picked a different book because this book is dance. I was yes. not expecting that. Um, but for Australia slash Oceania, this is Oceania. in Australia. I read The Swan Book by Alexis Wright, and this is set in the future where um, climate change has fucked everything up, <laughs> and there are like these climate wars, and it follows a girl named Oblivia, <laughs> huh. who she's like a aboriginal woman, at the beginning she's a child, but later in the book she's, she's an aboriginal she, woman. She's grown. She grown. There's not much of a plot, honestly. Mm. Like, all that really happens is that um, she grows up with, like, grows up with this, like, white woman, this woman who found her in a tree, um, old white woman who then dies, and then this man who's also, like, an abor aboriginal, but he's, like, gone off, become very, you know, educated and gone on to become a politician. She was promised to him as a wife. Oh. And so he comes to collect her and becomes his wife, and that's like pretty much it. But that was, I mean, the book is so dense. There's so much like symbolism, a lot to do with swans, as you can guess mm -hmm. from the title. And it's very also fantasy, I guess. I almost said magical realism, but I feel like it's maybe past crossed over into past fantasy. the realm of magical realism into fantasy. I don't know. This was one that I just wasn't really sure how to feel about it because. Mm -hmm. I didn't dislike it. <laughs> I thought the writing was quite beautiful and a lot of the imagery and, and symbolism was really beautiful. But there was, like I said, there was not much of a plot. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's, like I definitely think it would not be for everyone. Like some incredible. people would probably really hate it. But I, I, I kind of liked it. I gave it three stars. Okay. Like it was interesting. In a in a way, in a, in its own way. <laughs> yeah, I did all the seven continents. Damn, girl! Yay! You are a world traveler, which is way better than I thought I would do. But the audiobooks helped because without those, I definitely wouldn't have. Damn. Unless I found graphic novels for everything. <laughs> That'd have been tricky. That was it. That was our September. Yeah, and uh, I like. I think this beer is pretty good. It's pretty decent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, it is quite smooth. It is very smooth. That was it. That was our wrap up. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.